Hello, good day to everyone. I am Joe Rosen, President of Parkinson's Resource Organization, and I am bringing to you more things to know right now. I am so pleased to be introducing you to one of my favorites, John Mason, who is the owner of Bright Star Cares in San Fernando Valley. He is one of our wellness villagers that you can rely and depend on. That's why we have the Wellness Village. And um, he manages one of the largest concerns that people have in the Parkinson's community, and that is caregivers. And so we're going to ask him some questions today that you probably would like to have answers to. And certainly um, we're here to to serve and to get to you the information that you want and or need. So, John, welcome aboard again. So very nice to see you. Happy mm-hmm. that you are um, doing well. We just we just finished um, Tropical Storm um, Hillary and we're yes. alive and well. So thank you for that. Um, you know, let's just get started with some questions. Like, how does a person know when they need a caregiver? Well, it's usually uh, the, some event that happens most frequently, uh, just a uh, decrease in mobility or a fall. And then the loved one gets concerned as if their you know, husband, for example, falls and uh, uh, it could be minor, a bruise or scrape, or it could be a broken bone. And that's usually a a time when people call me, but another time, Joe, is is when we do respite care. So if the person giving the care is just, you know, like a, a woman caring for her husband with Parkinson's just needs a break. So we, we can do a couple hour shift where they, they can go out to lunch with a friend or, you know, go get their hair done or do some errands. So that's another time when, uh, you know, you need a caregiver when you're getting yes, the end of yes, your room. Yes. We actually, you know, we have a lot of men who are the caregivers as well. And mm-hmm. I um, was just in touch with one this morning in Hawaii, who I am so grateful that he listens to taking care of himself first, because without him being well, or without the caregiver, the the mm-hmm. family caregiver being well, the person with Parkinson's is in deep doo-doo. So we want to yeah. make sure that we cover the caregivers first before it's that old saying, you know, if you're on the airplane, put your mask on first before you help the person in need. So that's where we are. Are there any plans that somebody should start making? You know, if you're in the Parkinson's world and we know there is no cure for Parkinson's, it's going to progress. Is there something that a caregiver should be thinking about as to when they hire somebody, what should should they be making a list or how do they prepare to start looking for a caregiver? Well, it usually starts with just the, what the needs are, you know, just observing what your loved one needs. If it's, you know, help walking, you know, as I mentioned earlier, these uh, mobility issues. It's also good to have a company that's familiar with Parkinson's. Like, for example, uh, if people don't know Parkinson's and someone's on a walker and freezes, for example, uh, a, a caregiver that doesn't know what to do may start to pull them like, oh, don't stop walking. Let's keep going. And that's exactly what you don't want to do. So I think they should look for agencies that are familiar with Parkinson's. And I, so as you mentioned, progressive, I think it's also important that there's some kind of uh, assessment that's done initially like by a nurse, someone comes out to visit, ask questions and just do a physical assessment so that there's some real clarity on what the, you know, what kind of medical condition they're in. I know that you at Bright Star do that. And I am so grateful um, as are the people that we know have used your services that someone comes out to do that assessment and kind of tell them um, kind of what to look at, look for, and and look toward. Um, it's yeah. I'm just so glad. You know, a question that we have all the time is um, how you know I don't I don't really need anybody, but for maybe one hour a day or two hours a day, are there a number of hours? Or let me say, what is the smallest number of hours that typically can be purchased? And I say typically because I know other agencies are out there and and um, would want to respond to this as well. What do you think are the the smallest number of hours? Uh, for us, it's four. We have a four hour minimum, and that's mainly for staffing because we just it, 
I, I've tried to do shorter shifts and there's a high turnover. So the caregivers don't like those shifts. So it could be every week you have a new person coming, which isn't good for you, not for the caregiver, not for us. It's just a scramble. So that, that's why we had the four hour minimum. You know, that makes sense. And when we get into a later question about um, finances, um, that's going to come up again about the hours and short hours and what that means. Um, the opposite side of that is, can anyone hire a, a single caregiver for 24 hours a day? Uh, well, no, not in the state of California. I mean, if you follow the law, <laughs> the, you know, there's a lot of more strict labor laws. We, we used to do a day rate for 24 hour care, but now you're required to pay every hour, uh, 24 hours, even if they're sleeping. So we don't do that anymore. I isn't it it's amazing. You know, when my husband was alive, we in fact had caregivers 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I know that can't be done um today under California laws. So as long as people are up on what California laws require, um, and if not, we're gonna keep teaching you, everyone, because that's yeah. important. There's another thing that's really important. And I know, John, that your agency is an employment agency. Is there something that's important to be said about hiring an employment agency versus a referral agency? Yeah, the the big difference is the, the question of who's the employer. You know, if if it's a, an employment agency like for mine, they're my employees, so uh, that takes a lot of burden off the patient and their family. A referral agency, it, it becomes your employee. They find the caregiver for you. And then they, you know, you meet them. And if you like them, then you hire them as an individual. So that comes with, you know, a lot of responsibility, especially if something happens. Yes. Like, I mean, you almost have to hire an accountant unless you're very familiar with payroll, um, mm -hmm. filing taxes and that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I hear the horror stories about when caregivers get fired or, or are no longer needed and um, they immediately go to unemployment and start making their claims there. So if somebody is, is is hired from a referral agency and is not keeping up on paying the employee taxes and the insurance, et cetera, they can get into trouble. So yeah. we certainly want to not do that. Um, yeah, another you know, issue with that, Joe, I know you're familiar, is workman's comp. So if they get injured, uh, lifting someone, hurt their back, then you are liable for that because yeah. uh, you're the employer as the individual. Lots of different things. Um, driving somebody's car becomes an issue. Should they be driving your car, the, the person who hired the employee, the, the caregiver? Um, should they, yeah, just so many different things. So I'm hoping that all the listeners are writing down questions that they can ask. They can either write to the organization or they can call a caregiving agency and find in the state of California, at least, and find out what some of these rules and regulations are. We keep getting asked this question, um, you know, for for your agency, approximately what is the price of per hour of a caregiver? And then I'm going to follow that up by saying, why is it so expensive? Yeah, well, it's definitely gone up. I mean, I, I've been doing this 15 years. When I started, it was like 20 bucks an hour for a caregiver, which was reasonable. So now it's 36. That's our rate. And it's uh, uh, a lot of it is the minimum wage has driven it up. And then this post COVID world, we continue to, to run into uh, just shortages of caregivers. So we have to pay more to get people, good people that will stick around. Um, uh, an, an unfortunate reality we're in now. In yeah. World, it's more expensive. For sure. It really is. Um, and there is the, you know, the, so we were talking about the number of hours that someone can buy and we have to think about a caregiver driving from their home to the, to, to the um, consumer's home. And hmm. if they have to drive too often, the price has to go up because they have to cover their own gas and gas keeps going up in price. So it's just a cyclical situation. Is there any way to defray these costs or do you, is there, are there funds available someplace that you're aware of? Well, there are, um, um, like the, locally, there's a local charity in our area called MAPS that provides some funds to help defray costs of, of anything you need, caregiving costs, or if you need to fix your air conditioning, uh, those kind of things, it's anything to help seniors. Um, another thing people do 
that is has changed over the years is a reverse mortgage. I, I, I know those have come with, uh, there's a lot of skepticism about that loan, but uh, those have changed a lot. So some of my clients look at that and, and uh, as a way, if you're a, kind of a house rich person here in California as a way to get some money. Yes, we have a we have that coming up in future um, podcasts, if you will, on yeah. some of the ways to cover caregiving costs and other costs that are related to um, mm-hmm. providing care. Um, so um, I, I'm guessing that when you assess a family, you really work with them on what is the best way to hire for the least amount of money. Yeah, but yeah, I, we do like the what for. What we do often for families is we just try to load up whatever they need to do in that one four hour shift. So the caregiver can make several meals that can be eaten throughout the week, uh, try to schedule doctor visits on those days. And they do uh, like uh, all the cleanup, you know, do all the laundry, wash the sheets. So we kind of load everything up on that one day to fill up the the four hours. So I guess it's communication, communication, communication on yeah. everybody's part. Um, on how to best get through um, these times, um, with, in, again with the least amount of money or the least amount. Yeah, what an what a, what an area to be in. Do you yeah. take long term care insurance? Yeah, we do. So I've worked with many over the years: um, Genworth, CNA, Bankers, Calpers. Um, yeah, we, we we're. So do you to- take the insurance, or do you have the family pay you, and then and then they? Um, and then they apply for the insurance. Yeah, we, well, we do both. Um, I mean, for me, it's easier if the family pays and then they get reimbursed by their insurance. But uh, we've also done what they call an assignment of benefit, where they just uh, basically say that, you know, pay this agency directly and then we bill them directly. But either way, we're, we're comfortable. You know, we know how to fax all the notes and all the invoices, all the information that they want to reimburse for the care. Right. I knew that answer from you, but um, we have to cover it so that everybody around the country knows um, what we're talking about. So talking about around the country, in the state of California, we have Medi-Cal. Um, mm-hmm. In other states, it's Medicaid. Um, mm-hmm. Do you take Medi-Cal or Medicaid? I don't, not, not at this time. I I, I plan to. Actually, uh, uh, Medicare is offering this uh, Medicare Advantage uh, where they're paying a, a very small bit for uh, caregivers. So they'll reimburse for caregiving service because they see the need for it. As, yeah. you know, and it's a preventative service, so preventing hospitalizations and ER visits. So I think that's going to grow. Bright Star is big on that. We're, we're working to start accepting that it's called Medicare Advantage. Oh, so yeah. you have to look at your own insurance to see if it, that's covered or not. That would be terrific. I mean, in the old days, and I don't know how long ago that was, but um, Medicare used to cover 16 hours a year. I hope it's increased since uh, since I knew about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, I expect that to grow over the coming years, that, that the number of hours they'll pay for and just the coverage will increase because it, it does save it in the long run. Yeah. So I've known you for a long time, pre-pandemic years, <laughs> when you were um, facilitating our Sherman Oaks um, in-person support yeah. group. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You did a super job there. You do a super job with all of the people that come to the Wellness Village to find you and through our phone calls, et cetera. So I just want to be one of the first to thank you for your service. And is there anything in particular in all these years that you've learned something about Parkinson's or helping people with Parkinson's that you'd like to share with our community? Well, all the things you're doing, uh, Joe, of connection, that when people connect, uh, it's a hard disease, but they feel better, you know, at those uh, Parkinson's support groups. One of the most rewarding parts to me at the end was people just felt a little better talking to others, just comparing notes about what medications are using, how you deal with this symptom, you know, what kind of walker do you use? That, that kind of connection is really uplifting. 
and helps you keep wanting to do the fight because it's it's a hard one, a daily, daily battle. Call them nuggets, yeah. And yeah. and you're so right. Um, so naturally our our caregiver groups are still going on, our all of our support groups, they yeah. start again in September. But mm. the value of them, we keep hearing over and over and over are the nuggets that people pick up from them. Um, you just cannot, you just can't learn enough at times um, about yeah. what to do, what not to do, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the core values that you have for Bright Star Cares and so for our community to know um, their core values are serve with passion, do the right thing, and mm -hmm. make it great. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add today? Um, yeah, I, I think... Uh... It's it's all about caring. I, I really that's just I would add that as a core value: caring about patients, caring about our employees. And we're in the caring business, so I don't hire anyone if I get the feeling that they don't care. You know, it's just a job. They you know just want a paycheck, or you know they're not that engaged. So I would add that one as you, you know we need to care about these folks. Empathy, empathy becomes uh, someone with an empathetic. Um being is I yeah. think very important. We do the same thing here at the charity. Um, yeah. They have to care and they have to want to care and they have to want to give of themselves because um, there are others who need what we have to offer yeah. and what we have to give. Yeah. So I'd like to tell everybody that you can reach John Mason um, of Bright Star Cares through the Wellness Village in on our website. And that that URL is right down here at the bottom of the of the screen. And um, over and above that, as we've said before, the people in the Wellness Village are people that you can depend on, that you can rely on. We've vetted them. We have relationships with them for a long time. And in the case of John, we have virtually heard nothing but really good things. So thank you, John, for keeping your end of the bargain up. And it's oh, really right. nice to be thank able you, to Jill. constantly yeah. refer you. <laughs> Is there anything that you'd like to add about you or about Bright Star or about Parkinson's? Um, no, I just started. Uh, I was I, I was in pharmaceuticals, actually, is how I, and I got laid off uh, several years ago, 15 years ago. So that's how I ended up here. But I really wanted to help people, uh, especially seniors and I, I actually sold medication for Parkinson's is why I was familiar with the disease and have an interest in helping people. So I, you know, called on a lot of neurologists and talked a lot about Parkinson's and it's a real area of need. So I'm just glad to be part of your association here. Thank you. And the need keeps growing. Um, so I want to um, invite all of you to come to the village meetings that we have when they start again in September. This is where you will find John Mason and other professionals who will teach you about what they offer in the community. Also gives you an opportunity for you to ask the questions rather than me asking questions on your behalf. And so um, John is here to, he also submits articles for the newsletter. So watch for those. Um, and watch all of the that we do in the caregiving realm, because we really work hard on covering what's best for the Parkinson's community. John, I just want to thank you for all of the service and support that you've given us and that you've given our world. And for all of you, that's kind of we're pleased to be bringing you things to know right now. There's an author named John Rohn, R-H-O-N, that many of you have heard of. And he, he was um, quoted as saying, one person caring about another re represents life's greatest values. That's who John Mason is. That's who Parkinson's Resource Organization is. Keep caring, everyone. We do. And we're here to serve and to make your world and your life better. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you, Joe. See you soon.